Yeah. Talking to a couple of former Golden Eagles, Bob on the right, would you introduce the man you're standing next to? Uh, Rob, this is Jimmy Youngblood. Uh, I made him everything he is today. Uh, <laughs> of course, I'm Bob Fitzpatrick, and we played on uh, probably one of the better football teams back in 1972. We won the uh, Ohio Valley Conference Championship and uh, played Louisiana Tech at the uh, Grant Lynn Rice Bowl for the National Championship. And, Unfortunately, got beat. We won't, we won't talk about the score. No, we won't talk about the score in that ball game. But uh, I think it was 31 to 10, and I think the first touchdown was scored against me. And, and I thought if we lose seven to nothing, uh, I'll be ashamed. But it, it didn't wind up that way. But uh, it, we had some great times. So you weren't the scapegoat, Jim. Introduce the man on your left. Well, this I, I'm Jim Youngblood. I played here a little while. This is Bob Fitzpatrick, a, a teammate of mine. Uh, we played three years together. Right? He was a defensive back, and I was a linebacker. We had a lot of good times. Now, Jim went on to an all-pro career in the NFL, uh, but uh, I understand that the night you were drafted, it was a big night in your life. What, what happened that night? Oh, uh, well, I can't tell <laughs> everything. <that happened. laughs> but uh, we had a party at the house. Uh, all, but I, I guess about the whole team was over. Uh, a, a lot of guys uh, from from other schools were there also, and uh, we just had a we just had a big party. Have you guys uh, been able to keep in touch since since your playing days? Well, when we first got out of school, we, we kept in touch, and then you know it's, it's hard. I was I stayed in L.A. for 14 years, so it was hard. But since we moved back, since I moved back here, retired, moved back here, we meet in this tournament every year. But Rob, while he was while he was in the NFL, I would I would call him up every time he'd come to Atlanta, and and he'd somehow or another find some some tickets or something and uh, I can remember going down there meeting John Capaletti, a former Heisman Trophy from Penn State and, and just a great bunch of guys back then. But that was some good times back then for, for just a New Jersey kid like me to be around. Uh, Bob, what, what's one of your fondest memories uh, as a Golden Eagle player? Rob, I guess, uh, you know, being around kids like Jimmy Youngblood, uh, Mike Hennigan, we had, we had three guys that year. Uh, be drafted. Uh, well, I'll take that back. Elroy Screen was drafted and next year, but Mike Henning was drafted. Jimmy was drafted in the second round. Uh, we had a, a 10 and 2 football season. Uh, we had a uh, just a, a great camaraderie amongst us. Uh, Coach Don Wade uh, just did a great job with us. Coach Stone, Coach Joy, who recruited Jimmy, uh, just great great football coaches back then, and uh, uh, we just had a uh, we just had a, a good football team. Jim, any uh, any particular game or play or? or opponent that stands out as a fond memory for you as a Golden Eagle? Well, one of our biggest rivals, you know, back then was Middle Tennessee State, and I don't think they beat us uh, our four years here. So that, those, those are great memories there because, they, you know, we played back then, we played for the Shannon Andy Trophy, and uh, we, we kept it for four or five straight years. So that was, that was always a lot of fun. That was a big rival. But uh, like Bob said, just having so much fun with the guys on and off the field. We did a lot off the field. Bob and I fished. Uh, a lot together off the field, and we just had it's, it's, it's a fun time. And Rob, our junior year, uh, we were fortunate enough. We went to Youngstown, Ohio, and Ron Jaworski happened to be the quarterback there. And I think Jimmy might have put some pressure on him and deflected a pass from him, but I wound up intercepting uh, off of it. And, and that year's team, we were eight and three, and and had a pretty good football team that year. Well, now. Former radio announcers Gene Davidson and Eldon Burgess, a couple of great names. I know you guys remember them, but they used to tell the story about a night, I believe it was in Sparta maybe, that Jim uh, did something with a bear, but I've never been able to get to the bottom of it. Jim, what, what's the true story about that? Well, it, it is a true story. It, I went down on a, on a dare. No, but I really went down because they was going to give away 100 bucks <laughs> for the winter, and I needed some money. Because, yeah. <laughs> you know, at Tech, I never had any money, but uh, they told me that, uh, they was going to have uh, a bear wrestling, wrestling contest down at Sparta Fair, and a uh, bunch of the guys dared me to go down. And you know, back then you didn't <laughs> dare me to do anything. But, so I went down, and they I wrestled the bear, and they said I beat the bear, and I won a hundred bucks. So they, he gave me a hundred bucks, so I must have beat the bear. But I, I did something to the bear that uh, the, the trainer said had never been done, and. Uh, there was three guys fought before I did, and the bear just picked them up and just slammed them to the to the floor and laid on top of them, lick them in the face. And I said, I'm not going to I'm not going to be embarrassed, you know. So this time the bell rang. I ran as as hard as I could across and hit the bear in the chest and knocked him backwards on his back. Then I jump on top of him and the bear and he licked him. Yeah, in the face. I licked him. 
<laughs> but uh, the bear wouldn't get up and fight no more. So, and the trainer came over to me and said, nobody's ever done him that way. But Rob, the, 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 here's the story after that. You, oh. it, you know, it was, of course, this was probably a three or 400 pound bear, Jimmy. Was he that big? Oh, no, he's 750, 750 pounds. But, uh, you know, it, it, it was like a bloodbath. You know, Jimmy just oh, come yeah. in there. But, you know, like Jimmy said, he, he caught him off guard, ran across the arena, <laughs> and knocked him plumb down. And nobody had ever done that before. But, but the big thing was, Randy. that was my junior year. Randy. And, uh, Randy. I, I, I didn't want anybody to hear, like, especially Coach Wade. I didn't want anybody to know I had been at the fair down there, you know. But uh, it got back. It was in the, it was in the Tennessee in the next morning, and I hadn't even talked to anybody. I was on the front page of the sports page, and I remember Coach Wade called me in, and he said, he said, son, what have you got into now? So, <laughs> so but it was a lot of fun. And uh, matter of fact, my rookie year with the Rams, I had an agent who was from California, and uh, he got me. You know, this you know, I'm just a rookie scared to death out there in, in LA with a bunch of all pros and all out there too. And uh, my agent called me one night, he said, You're going on the Johnny Carson show tomorrow night. <laughs> and I said, What? And he said, You going on the I got you on the Johnny Carson show. He says, But you have to tell the bear story. <laughs> and I got to thinking about it, and I said, No, there's only one bear Bryant. <laughs> so I said, I'm not going on. And he could not believe I turned down the Johnny Carson show, but I was, I was trying to let that bear story die, you know, because <laughs> it put me in the same perspective as Bear Bryant, and I didn't want to do that. So. But Rob, he, he, he's, he's got to remember for his play on the field and <laughs> what he's done in the community and stuff like that. I mean, he's, he, if not the best, and that's been 40 years ago, linebacker ever come out of this place. I mean, All-American, Kodak All-American, played in the... The Shriners game, Jimmy, or the, mm -hmm. played in the All Star, All -Star game, game, and you know drafted number two. And and correct me if I'm wrong, Jimmy. I think back then, Rob, the signing bonus for uh, the round two was fifty, Jim. $25,000. So did, did, we, did we go to, did we get a car? Did we, get, did we finally get a new car and Mary get some of that? No, the first thing I bought was a Harley Davidson. Oh, yeah. <laughs> now really, I got drafted the night before, and uh, well after we got over the party we had a couple of days later, I go down to the bank. No job, you know, no money, and uh, Dr. Uh, Mr. Miller was down at the bank. And I walk in and I said, uh, Mr. Miller, I want to borrow some money. He said, well, what for? And I said, well, I want to buy a Harley Davidson. <laughs> 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 and, uh, so I said, you know, I just got drafted. I said, when I sign my bonus, I'll come down and pay this bike, uh, this bike off. And he said, he gave me the money. And I went out and bought me a Harley. Haven't been the same since. <laughs> <laughs> well, Cookville hasn't been the same. Tennessee Tech hasn't been the same. I appreciate you guys and uh, have fun at the golf tournament. And we'll see you every year back here, maybe during the fall at the, in the stadium. Okay. Thanks, Rob. Thank, Thank you. you.